Hello everyone, welcome to another doll customizing video with me Akin. Before we start, as usual, shout out to my coffee members, Ruby Rouge, Mel, Awkward Burb, Invisible Bear, and Mel again. Thank you so so much for your support, I really appreciate it. If you want to know what I'm working on before the video is out, consider becoming a coffee member, link is in the description. For this project, I'll do what I do best, making a big burly man doll. It's gonna be a lot, so let's begin. For the base of the body, I'm using this Seth Rollins action figure. I think it's the best base for this kind of project because it has decent articulations, the joint size is appropriate, and it has the least molded on clothing. Let's start by getting rid of the final knee pads. Last time I used this action figure as a base, the head popped off pretty easily, but not with this one. So let's just tear it apart, I make no use of the original head anyway. God, this looks gruesome. The head has been removed, then I trimmed that little plastic piece, I really have no idea why it's there. For the base of the head, I'm using Alistair Wonderland because Ever After High Boy Head is compatible with the action figure snack. Let's cut off the hair as close to the scalp as possible. Then remove the head by dipping it in hot water and yanking it away from the body. For some reason, this head is on a heat burns body. See, we can put the head on this body. But I'm still gonna make a few adjustments, here I'm filling the hole in the neck peg and also covering the hole left from trimming that small plastic piece with epoxy. While we wait for the epoxy to cure, I mix paint that matches the original body the best I can. This is good enough. I thin down the neck peg, someone asked me why would I use a head from another doll if I'm gonna sculpt my own head anyway. Using a final head as a base makes it easy to detach and reattach the head to the body, so I can work on the head and the body separately. It's just for convenience. Let's make sure the head still attaches to the body properly. It does, great. Before, when I sculpt my own head, I kept most of the features so I could have some guidelines, but for this one, I think I'm going solo. I'm just gonna take the neck hole and ditch the rest of the head. I stabbed some holes around the neck hole so we can fit some armature wires. Then I put it back on the body. The reason why I put it on the body for now is to make sure the neck hole is flush with the neck correctly. It's just gonna be for a few passes, just until we get the head shape. Anyway, here I'm weaving the wires into some sort of a bird cage. Something like this should work, then I start applying epoxy on the wire intersections and connections between the final and the wires. Then I start applying more epoxy to define the shape of the head. I think I added too much material so I sand it down. I add the jaws and the chin. With a rasp, I roughen up the surface. Then I mark guidelines for the new facial features. Now we can remove the head and start working on it separate from the body. Let me tell you something, being able to work on the head and the body separately is a blessing. Here I'm making indentions in the eyes to make the eye sockets. For the nose, I'm planting an armature wire for it. When I sculpt a face, I always start with the nose because all the other features are just radiating out from it. 
While I'm at it, I also add the eyeballs. After that's cured, I add the upper eyelids. I want to apologize, while I was filming, I didn't put the camera in the right position so you can barely see what I'm doing. Then the mouth and lips. Extend the chin a little bit more. Build up the cheeks as well as the lower eyelids. The forehead and the brow bones. And then the nostrils. For the ears, I add some armature wires before sculpting them. I find it easier to carve out the details of the ears instead of sculpting them. The face is done, he looks really ugly, but hopefully he looked better. Now I'm just gonna sand it to make the surface nice. For the eyebrows, beard, and hair, I think I'm just gonna sculpt them as well. It's gonna be less maintenance that way, so I mark where the eyebrows would be and roughen up that area so the epoxy will have a better grip. Now we can start sculpting the eyebrows. I use a pointy silicone tool to make the hair texture, or at least try to. After the eyebrows are cured, I mark the hairline as well as the beard line. I think I'm gonna sculpt the beard first. I start with the sideburns. I asked my best friend for an opinion and he thought he was still ugly. To be fair, he was ugly, but he looked better, I promise. Anyway, let's add the goatee. For the mustache, I was gonna give him an imperial styled mustache, but I couldn't do it. So I'm giving him a porn stash instead, it's a lot easier to do. Oh beard, what a saving grace to a man's face. Even my best friend agreed. Now we can start sculpting the hair on his head. And the head is done, so I'm gonna sand and rinse it. It took me a whole week to finish sculpting the head. Moving on to the body, here I'm marking where I'm supposed to cut. First thing I'm gonna do is widen the shoulder socket so we can make his deltoids bigger later without eliminating the articulations. Then I split the upper torso in half and separate the neck part. Then I drill holes all around the edges. To put the pieces back together with the new silhouette, I glue pieces of balsa wood as spacers. I hope this stuff doesn't get moldy. I weave some wires just for extra strength. Fill some of the gaps with aluminum foil. Now we can cover the additions with epoxy. I put the head back on just to check and I'm so glad I did because the neck turned out to be too long. I mean we're making a human not a weird giraffe, so I have to trim a portion of the neck. Now we're left with these cavities, so I just fill them up with epoxy. I drill holes in the bases of the corresponding parts. For the connector, I use a piece of acrylic rod that I cut to size, then I stick the neck piece, making sure it's placed in the right position. 
I add the acrylic rod pieces on the sides of the neck like this. I know epoxy itself is really strong, but if it doesn't have anything to grab onto, it can still break if it's accidentally dropped. These acrylic rod pieces will ensure that won't happen. To put the neck and the torso back together, I apply some epoxy around the base of the neck and then mush it flush with the base of the torso like this. Apply more epoxy around the neck to complete the fusion. The neck looks fine now, still a tad bit too long if I gotta be honest, but I think I can live with it. Then I start fixing the shoulders. Let's make the waist wider while we're at it. Then I hide some parts of the joint plates of the shoulders. Uh, I didn't film this right, but you can watch my tiger video to see what I'm talking about. I apply epoxy on the deltoids to make them bigger. I did something wrong because now the shoulder joints don't work well. Then I realized my mistake. I should have made the deltoids bigger first, then build the shoulder sockets around them, not the other way around like I just did. Because now the shoulders are blocking the joints. Damn it, let's take out the shoulders then. It's been a while since the last time I did a project like this, and I seem to be forgetting the steps. Now we can rebuild the shoulder sockets. Keep moving the shoulder joints to make sure they work the way they're supposed to. See the shoulder joints work now. I can even make the deltoids even bigger, which I will do later on. But I'm gonna do cosmetic sculpting on the torso first. I start with the neck muscle. Correcting the silhouette further. For the packs, I glued on some aluminum foil first before sculpting them. And then the belly. I want him to be thick and beefy but at the same time very strong looking. Then the back muscle. We're pretty much done with the torso, now I'm gonna make the arms bigger and also make the upper arms longer. I lengthen the upper arms the same way I fixed the neck earlier. Here I'm covering the base of the elbow joint with a piece of craft foam to prevent the epoxy from making it stuck. Now we can apply the epoxy. While I'm at it, I also match the circumference of the pelvis with the torsos and make the thighs thicker. I keep rotating it to make sure the waist joint still spins. Now we can merge the arms again and make them bigger to match the proportion. Give him the BBL treatment. Sculpt the elbows and make the forearms thicker as well. Now we can start working on the legs. I start by getting rid of the original feet. Boots? And from this Hunter Huntsman doll, I'm gonna harvest the knees. Turn me into a merman. Turn me into a merman. Shut up, bitch.
These knees are actually gonna be the ankles because waist not one not, right? As for the feet, I got them 3D printed, I'm not in the mood to sculpt them myself. These are from 3D Zip Guys Alpha Action Figure, but I got the toe and the heel merge, they are separate pieces in the original files. I also printed the shoe bases which I also got modified to fit the new feet. I'll put the links in the description. They fit but they don't slip in and out that easily so I'm gonna trim some parts of the toe boxes. Wear a mess while doing this because when you cut resin with a rotary tool, it turns into very fine dust and inhaling that cannot be good. Yet I smoke cigarettes. The hypocrisy. Now the feet can slip in and out of the shoe base at ease. Then I'm gonna make the lower parts of the ankles rounded to match the curvature of the feet. Drill a diagonal hole from the lower part of the ankle all the way through the feet. Cut a strong wire like stainless wire the right length. Now we can join the ankles and the feet together with, you guessed it, epoxy. I'm getting rid of the rest of the boot details before merging the feet with the rest of the body. Then I make the legs thicker so the overall proportion look more balanced using the E word. And the body is done. It took me two whole weeks to do that and to be honest, I was on autopilot throughout the process. Probably because of the neck and shoulder mishaps, so I just relied on my muscle memory but I think the body turned out fine. The sculpting stage isn't quite done yet, I want to make him into some sort of a superhero character so I'm gonna sculpt a few accessories. First, of course, a mask. I start by wrapping the head very tightly with cling wrap. Then I sculpt the basic shape of the mask on top of it. Once that's cured, I can clean up the edges and mark where the eye holes would be before carving them out. I find this to be easier rather than making the eye holes while sculpting, though I have to be careful because the epoxy is kinda thin and breaking it would suck. Looking good, looking good, but it's too plain so let's add more details to it. Other than the mask, I'm also gonna make him gauntlets as his weapons. The claws on the gauntlets look more like talons, but whatever, and I hope the mask looks like a bear. My cousin's kid who is 5 years old could tell it's a bear, so if you say otherwise, that's on you. Now we're actually done with the sculpting stage and it's time for sanding. Starting with a very rough grit sandpaper to take out large bumps and working your way up with finer and finer grit sandpaper to smoothen the surface. You can spend an entire day sanding or even more if you want your doll to be flawlessly smooth but I always get sick of it and call it done. Then I rinse the doll and wait for it to dry at least overnight. Don't forget to send the accessories as well. Whew, we're finally making real progress now, I used Ditton Premium to prime all these parts. 
or any kind of starbot primer should work. The primer turned out to be a little too dark than I'd like, but it's okay, it'll just need more layers of paint to become opaque. I lay down some packaging foam on my working table so I won't accidentally scratch the doll while I paint it. Now we get to paint the flesh parts of the head and body. Five layers of paint did the job, but with the body we can paint the entire thing at once because some parts are holding up the other parts that's being painted. Anyway, check out how well the primer adhered to the joint. Like why can't the paint adhere like this? Let's finish painting the rest of the body. Now that we gave the flesh parts the base color, I'm gonna continue by shading them, still using acrylic paint. For heavily modified dolls like this, I prefer shading with acrylic paints rather than blushing with soft pastels. I just think it saves time, looks appropriate, and also gives us an extra coverage. Anyway, let's start shading the body. Moving back to the face, here I'm painting the lips. Well, the lower lip, because that's the only one that's visible. Paint the eye whites. Then paint the eyebrows, beard, and hair black. Black paint is so opaque, it only needs two coats. My acrylic paint always turns out shiny after it dried, but it's nothing a matte top coat spray can't fix. Still from the brand Deaton. I give the head and the body two coats. Just like that, the shininess is gone. It feels really nice to the touch now. I continue by sketching the irises and pupils. It's hard epoxy with a matte finish, it can be drawn on. Then I do the real thing with acrylic paint, I'm giving him orange eyes. Do some shading. Paint the pupils. With a thin brush, I start painting the eye lines. Doing this was really scary because if I messed up, I wouldn't know how to fix it. I don't consider myself that good of a painter, so doing a full acrylic face-up is always a challenge for me. But seeing this as a head sculpted out of epoxy, there is no other way. It turned out okay, now we can dot on the eye shines. I dry brush very dark blue acrylic paint on the hair because it's looking really flat. For some reason, he looks Middle Eastern. Should we make it canon that he's Middle Eastern? Moving on to the body, using the thinnest brush I have and diluted black acrylic paint, I hatch the body hair. I think this is the best body hair I've ever done. Let's do that to the rest of the body. Now we can spray the head and the body again with the matte top coat spray twice to protect all the paint job. Reunite the head with the body and the doll itself is done. This is the size comparison with the other dolls. He's quite big, but at least not to the point he's gigantic. I think. It's sewing time. I'm gonna make the outfit out of this orange and brown t-shirt sleeves. We won't need much material because I'm gonna make him wear a skimpy outfit. Just in case you haven't noticed, the color scheme I pick are the colors of the bear flag. I'm too lazy to explain the process, but here's the step-by-step -step pictures. I make him a pair of briefs.
and sleeves. What do you call this thing? A bolero or something? I'm not feeling the sleeves so I scrapped them all together and the briefs don't fit quite right so I had to remake them with a better sizing. This new pair fits a lot better. If you see Skip stitching, no you don't. And yes, I sculpted him a dick that is magnetically attached. Tell you what, get me 20 members on coffee and I'll make an erotic photo set of him. Shoe making time, I primed, painted, and sealed the soles already. To construct the shoes, I fused a big piece of brown platter material with the orange t-shirt fabric using a heat activated adhesive sheet. I cut out the patterns of the uppers and the tongues already, also added stitching details. Apparently my sewing machine likes the platter material. Here I'm punching the holes for the shoelaces. Now we can start constructing the shoes for real. Uh, I start by gluing the tongues of the shoes with super glue. Then I cover the toe boxes. The platter material can be flexible if I pull it hard enough, so molding it into following the curvature of the toe boxes wasn't that difficult. Glue the uppers. I use satin cord for the shoe laces and the shoes are done. Moving back to the accessories, let's paint them. Give them two coats of the matte top coat spray to seal the paint job. I want some parts of the accessories to be glossy so I brush on two layers of gloss varnish on the raised parts on the mask. I give the claws on the gauntlets the same treatment. I made straps out of the brown platter material and glue them around the gauntlets. I made a long strap to make a belt and I also 3D printed this buckle in the shape of a silhouette of a bear head which I already painted pale yellow. I glued the buckle on the center. I have this thick textured bright yellow craft foam and I made fake compartments out of it then glued them on the belt, turning it into a utility belt. The bright yellow was bugging me so I painted the pockets to match the buckle. I also sewed snaps to all the straps so the belt and the gauntlets are removable. And with that, we can call it a doll. I name him Grizzly. At least that's his superhero name. That's a pretty good name for him, right? It took me 6 whole weeks to finish him. I really forgot how long it takes to finish projects like this. I started this project on May 19th and finished on July 3rd. And I worked on it every day, basically the last two months I didn't catch a break at all. So what do you think of him? Do you like him? Do you not like him? Let me know in the comments down below. I like him, especially the mask. It doesn't have a strap or anything, it just stays put on his face like that. All the time and energy I put into projects like this have always been worth it, but as much as I love doing this kind of project, it takes a lot from me. I have to put my entire dick and balls into it, I have to be committed to it, so still, I'm not gonna do this kind of project that often. Otherwise, I'd burn out and I'm not about to hate making what I love the most. Also, I don't have a stable income anymore, so I need your help to keep doing this. Consider donating or becoming a member on my coffee to support me so I can bring more doll customizing videos to all of you. Well, that if you like my content enough. This is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to. See you in the next one. Bye!